Do you see the ball? Do you recognize the other hand? Do you train it? If not, today's show for you. Dr. Peter Fatty is the founder of Game Sense Sports app. Training pitch recognition. Welcome to another episode of the Baseball Awakening Podcast, where we dive into the raw, unfiltered, unsexy side of player development. Get ready for some knowledge bombs with your host, Jeff Rottmeyer. Welcome to the Baseball Awakening Podcast. I'm Jeff Rottmeyer. Today, we sit down with Dr. Peter Fatty of Game Sense Sports app. Dr. Fatty, how are you, sir? I'm fine. Dr. Fatty, I'm excited to have you on. You know, you wrote a book called The Stick Tool, and it's obviously a topic that you are very passionate about, and it's on this concept of pitch recognition. Can you talk a little bit about how this fascination started? Um, yeah, well, you know, I, I played a little ball. I had kids that played ball, baseball and softball. And, um, obviously, you know, that's a, that's a big part of it. Um, uh, making, you know, good decisions, recognizing pitches, especially as you get further advanced and there didn't seem to be much of a way of, of training it. So the idea was, you know, how can we, how can we train this? So that's what I started with my uh, research on. And I found this, um, research that was like from, Australia in the early 1980s that they, they called this technique occlusion or video occlusion where you, you can see a pitcher and then the, the ball is cut off, you know, the pitch is cut off and you've got to guess the type of pitch and, uh, you know, ball or strike. And that's what they were using to kind of measure who are the experts in this. And so I thought, wow, that's, that's a nice training technique. And that's basically what, what I've developed then with that uh, game sense approach. So it's really, it's like a really Twitter simple type approach. You see pitches. I mean, there's all this VR and stuff out there. And, you know, you just, you see pitches and you recognize what they are. That's how you practice pitch recognition. And it's actually really uh, scientifically uh, supported method, even though it seems so simple. Like most people look at it and say, why, you know, why hasn't this been around before? And nobody just kind of put it together. So yeah. that's, that's my little contribution is, is actually putting that together in such a form that coaches and players uh, can use it. Yeah, and I think it's, it's one of those things where people don't look deep enough into. You know, it, the very first lesson we ever got as a young ball player was to see the ball. And, and I think we missed the boat on how we teach them how to do this. You know, we're, we're kind of, we kind of just assume that, you know, they can see the ball and what ends up happening is, and, and you know, I got 12, 13, 14 year old and up and, and they can't, they cannot really tell you whether they're seeing the ball out of the hand or not. And, and the odds are they're not. And, and so they get really good at tracking the ball and not picking up the ball as quick as they can. Yeah, great point. I mean, and and that's an important skill. Tracking the ball is really important. Sure. Probably just as important as recognizing it out of hand. The thing is, we don't really have to, like, retrain our eyes to track the ball. There's something coming at you. You're going to track it. That's instinct. Uh, But it does take a little retraining of the eyes to really focus in, pick that ball up, really start that processing before you start tracking because you kind of have to process that stuff like oh that popped up that might be a curve that has to like you can't think that you know and have time to do it that's got to pop up you know into your brain uh so that as you track it you're considering that so it's like that and that kind of comes first and then you're processing into the uh, just tracking the ball in there yeah you know that that's a great point you know, that that comes with every pitch has a, and, and you can get really good at seeing the ball out of hand and seeing it early. Every pitch has a kind of a way of coming out of the hand, you know, a shape or, and the better you get at that, the easier time you will have recognizing pitches. Well, that's exactly it. Jeff, what we're trying to do, like in the app, in the, in the game sense app, you see like the beginning of the pitch and then you guess what it is and it tells you right or wrong. And then you can get a replay. And I always have to be reminding people, you know, don't rush, make sure you get that replay you know, a lot 
because yeah. what that's doing is it's putting together, here's what you saw out of hand. Now here's the shape of the pitch. And that's what we're ultimately trying. Lots and lots of reps with that immediate feedback. And you just start to build that up. You don't have to think about it. It starts to build up in your, in your eyes and your brain to where you're seeing, okay, I see that out of the hand. This is what it means for the shape of the pitch. So I see that and I know what it's going to be down here. That's going to add up to timing. And every hitting coach will tell you it's all about timing. Right. And then we get to a certain level or a certain point where seeing the ball, okay, yeah, that that's a given, even though we're not doing it as efficiently as we can. Then it gets to a point where we're talking about you know, getting a good ball to hit. And really, you know, the pitch mm-hmm. recognition part is a part of that process. So you can't really, you can't get, you can't really get good at that unless you get good at seeing the baseball. And again, you, you can go with having to have the right approach and all that other stuff. Right. So what we want to do is get hitters and you can start them pretty young. Uh, like you're doing and then, and just let that nice and easily build up uh, to where when they get to a pretty advanced level, it's just very natural and they don't think about it. So that when you say, see the pitch, see the ball, you're not just meaning tracking, you're meaning this, this aspect of, of seeing it with your imagination. Now you see that ball coming out and you know exactly what the shape of that pitch is. You're just putting your bat on it. You know exactly where to, where to get that. That's, that's what we want to mean by seeing the ball. People think it means that you look at it. Well, looking at it isn't seeing it. Right. Seeing it is really knowing that pitch. I got you. You know, so that's that's what we're we're trying to that's what we want to think of is seeing the ball. Yeah, and that process takes time. You know, you gotta see a lot of pitches to get good at recognizing the shape, the spin or color or whatever it is. It takes time. So when you when you got a young kid and you jump all over him for swinging at bad pitches, that's part of the process. Right. And you got to be patient with him too, because, right. you know, they're trying to, they're trying to develop that. And sometimes they'll, they you know, they'll make mistakes and coach has got to accept that. But I think like with young kids, it, you just to give them something to work on. So it, it doesn't necessarily matter if that's important if, where you say like hit just middle away, just middle away. And, you know, then you score a point or if yeah. you've got a group of kids, you know, you're and, and, and actually I saw Jeff Albert, who was uh, with the Astros. And now he's the Cardinals hitting coach. Yeah. And I saw him doing that in spring training with pro players. Yeah. They're standing out there on a backfield and they're, they're playing that game. He's saying they'll go in there. He's, he's calling, OK, middle of way. He throws the ball in there. He threw one in. And this was to like a veteran uh, catch up catcher, like a backup catcher. And this guy launches one. It goes out in the parking lot, hit the car, car alarms going off. <laughs> he's cheering. Everybody's cheering. And Jeff says, okay, you're done. You're out. The guy's looking at him. He says, hey, where was the ball? The guy shows him with the bat, middle in. That's not what you're doing. You're hitting middle way. Done. Your turn's done. Next. <laughs> That's funny. I mean, yeah. you know, if they're doing it at that level, then it only makes sense to do it at the younger level. And I like the part of making it a game and making it fun. Making it a game, making it fun, but making it make a decision about the ball, a decision about the pitch. And so a term that's sometimes used is decision practice. Yeah. And that means taking what would just be normal practice, just front toss, just batting practice, just tee work, but every swing you're making some kind of decision on it. Even if a kid's just hitting off a tee or a pro player, right. just hitting off a tee, visualize that pitch coming in. You know, you've All got right. it set there on the outside corner, visualize that as a, pitched by a righty coming right to that corner, bam. Every once in a while, throw into your visualization, oh, I read slider. That's off the corner. I'm laying off that, yeah. you see. Um, just so you're, you're taking every one of those routine practice turns and you're, you know, you're making it count extra because you're putting that little decision in it. You can do that when you're throwing, when you're throwing batting practice to a, a kid, you know, just say, hey, if I, if I, if I, if I flip a, a curve or something, lay off of that. Inside, right. outside, whatever it is, right? You know, and, and um, it, it also gives you a chance to work on their mechanics of hitting the other way and stuff like that. But really, sure. mostly, you're just trying it. You're just giving them a reason 
to to be paying attention to that ball. Right. Yeah, being present is important. And you see a lot of mindless work and you can solve that pretty quickly by telling them to visualize your pictures and, and go with the ball and, and all that good stuff to get better. The last thing is that you know, instructors, coaches are saying visualize the pitcher all the time, but we can't tell we can't really tell if somebody's doing that. They don't right. even know if they're doing it right. Right. So one of the benefits that we find with this uh, with the the game sense program that you know guys can can just take right into a, the cage with them on an I, iPhone, they're looking at that, and you say do a couple of these, and then visualize that picture. Yeah. Because it's it's showing you you know what it looks like from the box off that you know take pick that guy and picture that guy throwing those pitches. So you're making that direct connection there. Yeah, I, I'm actually teaching them how to visualize. Right. I, I love that game sense. So why don't you go ahead and tell our listeners a little bit about what the game sense is? Well, it's um, it's got uh, about 20-something pro pitchers in it. And that's what we use for the high school travel, college, and professional players. Um, we've got the pro players who use that all the way up through, like, the rookie leagues. And, um, and then we've also got a section with youth players in there. These are guys who are 14, 15, 16 years old, good travel ball pitchers. And, and everything that's in there is just this real simple content. It's a video, you know, it's not animated or anything. Um, and you see it kind of from a batter's point of view. It's not exact. We're not trying to do a simulation. It's not a GoPro and the helmet or anything, but you see a, you know, you see a batter's view through the, to the batter's box and here comes the pitch pitch is cut off and then you've got to touch the screen to enter okay it's a fastball curveball change up ball or strike boom 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 it tells you ding you got it right or it tells you what the right answer was if you got it wrong you get a replay like i said you get 10 pitches uh, it takes about a minute and a half so that's a whole drill and then you either beat the score and it'll say hey try something new or it'll say hey you know you should repeat that but you can actually do whatever you want. That's one of the things I like is it's, it's not like a video game where you kind of have to go through every level. If you want to say, hey, I'm going right for the advanced level where you only see like just like a couple feet of ball flight, go mm-hmm. for it. Yep. So, uh, you know, you guys just do that. You do it over and over, and it's a real light load. Guys can do that five or ten minutes a day or five days a week, and that's your entire workout. I had one of the pro guys say he did, because they were required to do it, he said he got his whole day's work in while he was waiting for his order at in and out So, you know, that's that's yeah. the type of, you know, it's it's the kind of micro-learning, because it's like, man, there's so many things that come at everybody these days, and yet there's always these little times. And in baseball, there's lots of these little times. You're traveling to a tournament or whatever it is, you know? Take out the phone and, and, and do a little work. Yeah. Ten minutes. Yeah, I like it. You know, it seems to be one of those things where there's always no time to do that. There's no time, no time, you know. It's always, it always seems to be a time issue. But you're talking about five minutes, and everyone can find yeah, five right. minutes so that's, in their that's schedule. Kind of micro learning. Is... Yeah, that's, a, that's kind of a new concept now in, like, military training and all kinds of things. We're talking about micro learning. Yeah. What can you do in just a few moments, just a few minutes? You know, that, that phone's on you anyway. Take that out and do that. If, if, if somebody's got an iPad or a computer, great. You've got a bigger screen. It looks great. Sure. But uh, people people do it just fine off the phone, too. Yeah, I, I think it's a great tool. And it's one we tried to use. And, and now that I'm thinking about it, I need to get my Internet situation solved so that we can use it more because it is a great tool. So, So let me ask you this. We talked earlier that, you know, tracking the ball and early recognition was kind of two different things. And the impact to a hitter's decision-making process, how big of an impact is it for, for someone that's listening to say, I hit the ball well, but, but as they start getting to higher levels and the pitchers are getting better, and maybe they're missing the link. How important is that first third window? Well, it gets really important because when the pitchers start getting good, they start they start trying to trick you. Right. It's like Maddox said, like Reg Maddox said, you know, when somebody asked him what, what was the secret, 
And he said, you make balls look like strikes and strikes look like balls. Right. <laughs> you know, and so you'd see him, if, if people know uh, Maddox, he'd, he'd throw that pitch to a right-hander and it looks like it's going to be high and outside by foot, whoop, drops right over the plate. And even if they've seen it, you know, a lot of times, they still can't pull the trigger because their eyes are telling them that. We rely so much on our eyes. Everybody relies on our eyes. That's, you know, that's, that's evolutionary. But ball players rely and hitters rely on their eyes even more. And the thing is, your eyes can lie. Thank right. you. And those pitchers know how to do it. So when you get to the point where your pitchers can make your eyes lie to you, then um, that, that's when you're going to get the payoff from having kind of been building this, this in. So you're seeing, it's not like you know what it is. You're not saying, oh, I see that's a slider. Right. But in the back of your mind, you smell something fishy. You're saying that looks like a fastball down the middle, but it smells bad to me. I'm laying off, you know. Right. And it's not a decision like that. It has to happen. So if you're if you're thinking about it, it's too late. That's why you got to have to, you know, have built that in there, and you've got such a database, and you don't you don't ever think about it. Some you know the coach would go back and say, hey, how did you lay off that pitch? I don't know, just didn't look right. Right. Okay, that's good enough. We don't need more than that. We don't need you to say you saw skinny wrist or you 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 picked up the tumbling spin. You know, we don't need a guy to explain it. Right. He says it smells bad. That's good enough for me. Right. Look good, smell bad. Right. Yeah. So, so let me ask you this. You know, based on your work and everything, can a guy? Let's say we we know the situation. We know the pitcher. We've seen him his stuff before. You know, is it is it a process of elimination game in terms of what pitchers you're trying to recognize in certain situations and count, or can a guy pick up every single pit that a guy has at any given time? Yeah. That's- that's absolutely correct. Uh, the every time you add a pitch, you, 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 it, you, it gets a lot more difficult. So, like in that game sense, on the pro side, um, even though we've got like those twenty pitchers in there, there's only one of uh, every one of them has like three pitches to go by. And there's two guys in there where where they've got four pitches, and everybody says, "Wow, yeah, that makes it right. a lot harder." Yeah, right, because you got to think and deal with that. So if you can get you know, it's, it's, um, I was reading something the other day, uh, where somebody was saying, you know, people try to complicate this. It's like, you know what pitch you hit. So if you get in an advantageous count, you get your two, one, three, one, two, oh, you know, I mean, you want a fastball right there. Look for a fastball right there. If you're ready to really clock it, it's much worse that that fastball right there is going to get past you. Cause you might go a whole game and only get in that situation once. So you better right. be ready. Right. So, yeah, if you get in the situation, now when you get pretty advanced, you get and you start to say, even with two strikes, what is this guy's put away pitch? Right. What's this pitch he's going to make me chase? And if you can lay off of that chaser, then you can get another and you can, you can do some damage with that. Right. So it's like, um, and, and I'll go back to the Astros because they're well known with this and, and I know some of their guys working on it. And, um, you know, several years ago, their, their kind of mantra was Astros hit strikes. Well, their mantra has evolved now, and it's Astros hit strikes hard. Yeah. I may not sound to your listeners like that much difference, and there's a big difference. Yeah. You know, one's a little bit kind of, okay, passive, we're reading the pitch, we've got to right. make sure it's, you know, and the other is, we're not letting a strike get past us. Right. We're not letting our ball get, you know, the other is, is, very aggressive and that's what we're really after we're not trying to be passive up there we want to be that selective aggressive right hitter right. Now, the way Pujols was in his prime it's like man there's nothing i can throw this guy right right yeah yeah i mean i think a lot of that mentality comes from maybe you know like we talked earlier it's uh it's it's that decision that decision factor you know, with guys not making decisions quick enough, and, and when you don't make decisions quick enough, you tend to be a little more passive, and, and really you'd rather be more aggressive than passive, and, and you and you learn the shape, the spin, the right. color, and all that stuff later, I think, so I think it comes down to decision making. Well, it does, but we've got to do decision making in the right time and place, so that, you know, you... That's why you're doing practice. That's why you're using the app. That's why you're standing in the bullpen every chance you get. 
Because when you're out there in the game, you really don't want to be doing decision making. We don't want to be making a decision to swing. You want to just be reacting and just letting, you know, letting the mental gears work, which they will. Yeah. You know, they'll, they'll give you that. They'll, what you're looking for is they just, this just your eyes and your brain are just going to give you that impulse, that little shot of adrenaline to bam, to, you know, to get after that. Oh, that's, you know, that's what we want. So that's where that's a well-trained, you get that fire, you know, that, that, that message to, to, to fire your swing, you know, you, yeah. So one of the things, and this is kind of an interesting one, but one of the things that the scientists talk about that psychologists talk about is system one and system two and system system one is fast and automatic and um, pretty much unconscious. System two is real deliberate. And this is where you do decision making mm. and you compare all the options. You're going to buy a new car. You know, that's right. your system two. So the trick is here that you've got to practice in system two, you set up your practice and all like, but you got to perform in system one. Mm, yeah, that makes sense. And when guys can make that transition as coaches can help guys make that transition. Cause sometimes you'll hear coaches be real worried about paralysis by analysis. They don't want guys thinking up there. Yeah. Well, there's a, <laughs> it's a big mistake yeah. to mistake, not thinking for thinking so good that it feels like not thinking. That's what we're after. That's that system one where, yeah, all that's going on, but it's so well trained that you don't have to manage it. It runs itself. It's like when you, you can drive home and sometimes you get there and you go, wow, I don't even remember getting off the highway. Right. You, you're, you're, you're so trained. You don't need to consciously control that. In fact, you might mess it up. Right. You know, one of the things they find like, is, uh, I've got a uh, colleague who's studied putting and why is it that if there's more pressure on it, people screw it up. That's well, because they start thinking about it. They mm -hmm. start thinking, oh, I got to be smooth with my stroke. It's like just, and you hear hitting instructors say it all the time. Don't think, just go. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't practice thinking. You see what I mean? Right, right. But yeah, we've got to put that into practice, and we don't care if somebody's struggling. Like the one we were talking about, hit it the opposite way or whatever. You know, if yeah. it fails some, that's okay. Yeah. It's, it's no big deal. You're just practicing it. But so. you have to practice. And you said this early on. It, it's reps, it's years. I mean, you've got to yeah, practice it a lot. Right. And that's all we're trying to do is, you know, we're not saying that this app here will make you, make you have that expert pitch recognition. What we're saying is it's going to get you there faster. Right. Yeah. No, I mean, I think, you know, we live in a time where we play a lot of games and when you play a lot of games, you miss the boat on training this system too. The, the, the practice part is where we get to make mistakes and, and learn what we can and cannot hit. Yeah, that's really good, Jeff. I mean, that's the whole idea. If right. somebody, if somebody is um, getting it, uh, like one of the things that we have people do is the, is the bullpen stand-in. So right. And you, you read the, the e-book, the six-tool e-book. Right. So you know that there's, there's a trick to how you're supposed to do that. If you just send guys to stand in in the bullpen, they're going to track the pitch in. Right. The coach is going to say, hey, I'm sending guys down there to track. Okay. That's fine. But if you want to make that a pitch recognition drill, what they've got to do is say, okay, I'm calling yes for fastball, no for anything else. Right. And they've got to call it out before the pitch hits the catcher's mitt. Now, when you see guys, they aren't turning their head, looking into the mitt. They're looking right there at that pitcher and they're trying to just say yes or no. Yeah. That's trying to get it out before it hits the, on that. And, um, and they, you know, they do that in the, uh, in the Astro spring training too. And, and, it, and, uh, I was down there visiting a couple of years ago and you'd hear that, hear this Jeff calling out, you know, loud and early, loud and early. He wanted you calling that out. And the other thing he would say, and this goes to what you were just saying, if you're getting them all right, you're doing it all wrong. Yeah. We want to hear you call making some wrong calls because that means you're pressing the envelope. That yeah. means you're using your practice time to get better. You're not trying to look at trying to impress anybody or trying to get them all right. If you're getting them all right, you're doing it all wrong. All right. So, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, the, the, even the pro teams now, a lot of them are going away from their instructional league where they used to send the guys down after their minor league season and they'd play 20 or 30 more games. And now it's like, no, we're going to use that to practice. We might play two or three games. Nice. So, you know, sometimes we, sometimes we just play, we love the sport, we love to coach it, we love to play it, 
and sometimes we play it too much yeah. because sometimes really what you need is practice, especially it's getting cold outside. We were talking about yeah. that, you know, so yeah. the Northern guys like, Oh, we're going to lose out to the Southern guys because they get to play more games. I say, uh-huh. no, this is where you gain on right. that. Use this for practice. Yeah. Two cold winter months of practice right. in the right way is going to push you further ahead than, you know, 20 more games. I agree. I, I like, I like that stand in there and call the pitch and then say yes or no if you're going to swing. Do you do all that at once or do you separate? So do I sit there and say, okay, curveball coming, yes, I'm going to swing. Or is that too much? I, that's too much to begin with. But you know, I've, I've talked with, a, with, a, with the uh, manager of a, of a uh, Midwest League, you know, um, minor league A, full season A team. And they, they said, that's all we're trying to get guys on right now. So that the first level of pitch recognition, absolute first level of pitch recognition, fastball, not a fastball. So yeah. You're out there and you're going to say, I'm going to call out yes. If I read that, and I, a fastball coming out, and I'm trying to get it out, you know, trying to get my yes out before the ball hits the catcher's mitt. And I'm going to say no if it's not. And if, it, and if your hitter says, well, I didn't say anything, that means no. He said no. No means no. Not saying anything just means frozen up. Yeah. So you got to say yes or you got to say no. Yeah. Now, when they get a little bit, when they get good at that, now you say, okay, today, yes means fastball strike. No mm, means anything. I else. see, yeah. You know, this today, yes means what I would swing at if I was ahead in the count two to O oh and looking really at for my pitch. And no means anything else. So we just use yes and no all the time. Yes and no, yes and no. Yeah. Or, you know, some guys like to use hit and no, because hit, yes, kind of comes out yes, whereas hit, you know, they, they want them doing something like it. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, but that's what you, you don't want them. You don't want them calling the pitch type or anything that's out in the bullpen, especially if guys have been working the, the, the computer, the, you know, the game sense app on their computer or their phone. And that, that, okay, you're trying to call the pitch. You're trying to call ball strike. But then right. when you get, move it out into the bullpen, you're just trying to call, you know, yes or no, yes or no. Keep okay. it simple. Yes or no. I like that. You know, you, you mentioned something earlier about the importance of the game sense being a real pitcher versus an at an animated pitcher. So, so now we are coming into a time where all this virtual reality stuff are kind of coming into play. What's the difference, or is there a difference? Oh yeah, there's it. Right now, there, Jason Giambi uh, is behind an app that you know you, where you put your cell phone in the VR goggles and right. like that, and um, uh, it's it's a good tool, but um, it's it, you know you see you, it's good for seeing the shape of the pitch and kind of understanding some of those things, but it's the kind of thing where you you really need to see that pitcher m- moving. You really need to see the release of the of the hand. You've got to see yeah. that. And, um, you know, it's, it, it's, it's not that it, they're, they're different things. It's a matter of what tool are you going to put in your toolkit? So if, if, if one is, uh, you know, kind of a highly specialized tool, you know, I, I want to have a hammer and a saw. I'll worry about the other tools later. So we think of our tool as a, a hammer or a saw. I mean, this is just yeah. something you can use every day, you can sharpen, sharpen up your eye. You can use it from the time you're probably at the point where it is now, I'd say 13 or 14, somewhere in there, about the time guys are going to um, full length pitching and, yeah. and the travel and that's, or, and, and it can carry all the way up through the, through the majors at that point. Yeah. Uh, it just becomes a daily type of thing. Yeah. And that's when you start to really change things is when something like that becomes so much a part of your regular routine that you feel weird if you don't do it yeah just like any other type of practice or or workout yeah yeah i agree i wish i wish i would have had something like this when i played i get that a lot yeah <laughs> yeah oh, i i might have stuck in the majors if i could have picked up a third ball yeah well i don't know about that far you know there's still a lot of other pieces at least for me but it definitely would have been a nice tool. You know, I struggle with that slider, you know, and I, I couldn't hit it, and the pitcher knew it. That's what Ted Williams called the equalizer. Right, yeah. 
Okay, let, let's talk a little bit about, you know, um, soft focus to hard focus and, and that whole concept that coaches talk about. What's your thoughts on the whole soft focus, you know, looking at the bill or whatever and, and turning it into a hard focus? You know, some guys talk about, you know, keeping your eyes still, not moving it. And there's some guys that like to follow the ball all the way through the motion or whatever it is. Um, well, what, what's your thoughts on all that? Well, I don't think there's any particular one way to do it. Yeah. I mean, I, I've heard Johnny Bench, um, he was just on a Reds game, and somehow it came up, and people say, well, you know, watch for the release point. And you say, well, I just track the, you know, if a pitcher's doing a stab down, you know, in their, in their motion, they wind up, you know, they see the ball. They say, hey, if they show you the ball, take a look. Yeah. You know, you follow it around. Other people, uh, you know, you do hear the, the hard, soft focus, hard focus. But Manny Ramirez also would say, when I look at nothing, I see everything. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I'm not going to stand here and say, look at one or the other. The thing sure. is, if you really make this a part of what you're doing, and then and then you can, you can practice it on the uh, video, look at this, look at that, even better than... You go into that bullpen. If you've got guys doing this bullpen stand-in, that's the time to try some of these different things. Yeah. Hey, you know, try it. Try following that ball all the way around, and not just try it once. Try it for a couple of a right. couple of sessions out there. See what feels comfortable for you. Because yeah. a, you don't want to try and force everybody to do it the same way. Right. But b, you don't want guys to settle really early on and get real comfortable with something that may not be the best way to do that. So oh, if man. you're developing guys, right. say, okay, go out there, but in a safe environment, don't try, don't say do this while you're trying to hit. Right. Because you're going to screw them up and they'll right. get mad at you. Right. Yeah, um, no, that. But just do it in the bullpen. Just yeah. Do it with the, you know, when you're trying to stand in. Yeah, that's, that's kind of where I'm at. You know, I'm going to present you all the different options and let's see what works for you. You know, same goes for mechanics and everything else. You know, two-strike approach. And there's several ways to do it. You know, you, you got to give them the tools and figure out what which one works for them. And, and it's kind of that same, that same concept. Right. If you give them the tools, they can use the tools in different ways. You know, uh, it's it's amazing what they can figure out. All right. A hammer doesn't come with instructions. You know, it's not instruction that helps you go with a hammer. Kids don't hear things in the same way. So, like right now, a lot of hitting coaches are saying, oh, don't do that, squish the bug. That teaches them to do some other thing. It's like, that's that's what communicates with, you know, that's what some kids would understand. That right. It, it, it's hard to say, stay inside the ball. Oh, what? Stay inside the ball. What does that mean? Right. It means something, you know, to some people, that okay, I got that right away. But if you've got some kid, that, that may not be good. So you give them some other kind of instruction. Right. You'll say, try and hit everything. Um, you, you, know, you know that coach down there in the in the first base uh, um, uh, you know, box there. Uh, you don't like that guy. Try and hit him with everything you hit. You know, <laughs> the right-handed batter. So you, you just come up with one thing and you try this, you try that, and you and all of a sudden they go, oh, that's what that's what staying inside the ball means. Right. Okay. And then, then they realize that they're not hitting the first baseman. Instead, they're hitting it to center field. They're hitting it up the middle of the field, which is what you were trying to tell them at the beginning. Right. No, I like so that. So that's that's the one thing you just you know that's that's probably one of the most important things that coaches do. My wife was reminding me she has our daughter um, both took lessons from and then helped teach with a, a really great softball hitting coach over in Indianapolis, Joe Creek. Nice. And, um, you know, that was his whole thing. He, he, he'd try and tell people something like what you're talking about with the focus, soft focus, hard focus. Okay. And then he'd watch, and if that didn't, they didn't seem to be kind of getting it from that, he'd try something else. He might do something physical where he kind of hear, move your head here, you know, because some people kind of understand better that way. He might give them a, a, a trick, like try and do this with the ball you're hitting. At the top of the ball, the bottom of the ball, swing under the ball. You know, right, for some right. people, if if you see them topping the ball, don't tell them don't top the ball. Don't right. tell them hit the center of the ball. You might say, right. look, this next ball comes in here. I want you to literally try to swing under the ball. Right. And then, you know, whack, they get it right in the middle. Oh, wow. So 
you, you don't quite know what's going to connect with each one of those kids. But so the, the same instruction is not going to work for, for all of them. It's you not. want them all to hit it hard up the middle. Right. But you might have to tell them all something different to right. get them to do it. That's the challenging part. And really, that's the fun part. I, I really like that part. But you can't, you can't get frustrated. You know, the part, that part, too, is, is, is our learning process as well. You can't get frustrated when they can't get the one cue that every kid seems to happen to understand. Right, exactly. It's like, okay, you haven't found you haven't found the right key to open that lock for them yet. So it kind of comes back on you. You're saying, okay, right. I'm going to try another key here. We'll get it. Yeah. Okay, so, so when I talk to hitters and I talk to guys that have played, there will be some guys that say they see spin. There will be some guys that say they see the seam. Some guys will see color. Some guys will see shape. You know, what's your thoughts on all that and, and what guys see coming out of the hand? Yeah, I, I, I read a really interesting um, article once. A reporter was standing around the batting cage at the All-Star game, and he was asking people about that. He was asking the hitters about that. And so um, uh, Clark, Clark, what's his name? The guy who was the first baseman for the, Will Clark? For the Giants. Will Clark played at Mississippi State. Right. And he would say, yeah, of course I, I see the spin. Every ball spins except a knuckleball. It goes in the direction of the spin. How could you ever hit if you didn't see? Sammy Sosa standing right next to him and said, I don't see any spin. I see the ball hit the ball. You know, I cracked yeah. the ball and hit it. Right. Okay, they're both having pretty good success. Right. Um, Henry Aaron, Hank Aaron at some point, somebody asked him about, you know, his approach. And he says, well, what I do is zoom in on the pitcher's hand, and that tells me everything I need to know. Okay, well, eyes don't zoom, but in his huh. mind, He's doing some. He's doing a concentration or a focus thing in there, and it's a timing kind of thing. Yeah. So again, there are a lot of ways to get after that. Now that doesn't mean that any way is okay, and so it doesn't matter. Sure. What yeah, it so, means is try different things. Yeah, and I guess that that concept of zooming in on the hand would be seeing the thin wrist for the breaking ball, or or something like that, or or at least yeah, in, right. in his mind. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and what you see is it's like you don't necessarily you, you pick up cues. You're not seeing it directly, right? Uh, like um, um, Boggs, Wade Boggs, in, in his book, he would say he would feel his eyes bob in his head. And that's how he knew he had a hanging breaking ball, mm. the breaking ball that was going to be in the zone. He didn't say, I see it pop up out of the pitcher's hand. He yeah. didn't see, I see a skinny wrist or anything. Yeah. He had this internal cue. He'd say, I'd feel my bobs, my eyes bob in my head, and I was just ready to get all over that pitch. I don't know if you can teach other people to do that. Right. Boggs also ate a whole chicken before every game. <laughs> I don't know if you can teach everybody <laughs> to do that either. So. You know, you, you as the coach, you want to kind of get a feel for what's working for a guy. See if you can build on that a little bit. Um, if they're struggling, give them a little something to try. So the that that first third window, and so there's that window mm-hmm. portion, and then there is the hand. Is, is it similar? Let, let's say you know one pitch comes and I don't quite see it out of the hand, but I saw it in that. Th- First, third window. A- am I going to be seeing the same thing? Sure. Yeah. 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 And it, it kind of depends on the type of hitter. Like some people will say, oh, this is a Tony Gwynn type thing. Well, actually, I don't know that Tony Gwynn especially needed a lot of first, third pitch recognition because he had a swing that could cover the strike zone the size of a car door. Right. He could put a good lick on anything. And he right. wasn't trying to launch angle them or anything. He was just trying to. Hit it squarely anywhere within, you know. So basically, he was he's going to be a tracker. He was going to be a last a last third guy. He yeah. probably didn't need to do that. But if you think of recent players, uh, one of our favorites, Frank Thomas, and yeah. you know, he's a big guy with a long long levers and a long swing. If he's not picking that ball up in the first third, if he's not knowing what he's doing with his swing in the first third, He's got no chance of of adjusting that that big old aircraft carrier swing midway. Right. So that partly depends on on trying to match up those things. We we look at a current guy like Josh Donaldson. Well, you know, he went along. He was a he was a pro player, 
but you know, he was not top grade. And then he had just, at some point he'd seen enough pitches cause he's got that kind he's not a big guy. Right. He's got that kind of ballistic approach. He's got the leg kick and he sinks into his hip and then hands. There's a lot of action in there. Right. And there's no way, you know, he didn't get really good until that mental database had, had right. built up and he knew exactly what that pitch was going to do. He picked it up out of hand. He's got the first third and you can see him. He talks about, it's kind of funny because these guys will talk on the Saturday morning um, MLB network show that's supposedly for kids, but you can pick up some good stuff out of there. Absolutely. He would say he was taught early on. You have to step before you know where the ball is. He said, I don't do that. I get my, my, my foot up in there. You know, he does the leg lift. Right. He steps depending on where the ball's going. Well, you don't do that unless you're picking it up pretty early. Right. Yeah. Let, let, let's talk about today's game with, with the strikeout being pretty high and everything that, you know, like the pitchers are throwing harder. Uh, there's a lot more movement. There's not a whole lot of mental database on the pitchers that are coming in right. that hard and with, with that type doing, of movement. They've got these relievers coming in and out the last playoffs that they had. Good yeah. Guy. So as a hitter, if they, and, and this is partly where all that, all the statistical analysis they do at that top level because they show that well hitters have a lot better average on their third at bat and of course you've probably taught guys that all all along okay you, right. you, you're measuring him you're getting this what do you get your third at bat with this guy well sometimes you're not getting the third at bat anymore, right even off a starter so you've got to gear up for that pretty quickly and the speeds are going up i mean frankly the pitchers are just getting better and better right uh, so, you know, it's on the hitters to try and reclaim some of that territory. And that's that's the area we're trying to work with. Just pick up everything you possibly can right. that, you know, that, that that pitcher might be giving away. And especially at the developing levels where we're not talking about pros. Sure. You know, you'll either have a guy who slows his arm down for the for the changeup. And we have guys, they start watching the, um, they start doing the video app. And they start saying, wow, I can see guy. I can see when guys slow their arm down now. I never saw that before. I see it. Nice. And I know what that means. My, you know, my eyes and my brain know what that means. If I see a guy slowing down, here comes the ball right down the middle. Well, that's not where it's going to end up, is it? Right. I lay off of that one. Right. I see a guy slowing it down. It comes up. It looks like it's shoulder high. Well, maybe I'm ready to be on that one because that is going to. Um, so they get the, you, you get the feel for that. The other thing that you really get when, like, you've got whole teams using this, is you get them talking about that. So they'll go yes. in there and they'll say, "Hey, look, that guy, that guy is trying to. He tries to look like he's throwing it harder when he throws it off yeah. speed. You know, so like a young player, a lot of times they'll really lift that knee up. That young pick, ah, you know, he's gonna just jack that ball up there, and that's your sure tell that it here comes a changeup. Right. Yeah. Um, so yeah. you know, you see a lot more of that. Yeah, that, that, if you're looking for it. Right. I, I tell our hitters all the time, if you guys would sit and watch the game, you can pick up a lot. But if you're sitting there and you're dicking off in the dugout, you, you're going to miss a lot of things that can really help you as a hitter. I mean, you get you get three to four bats that are, what, a minute and a half long? So you get essentially about four minutes a game where you can make an, have an impact. So why not use the rest of the game to pick up on one cue, some couple cues that could help you get hits? I love to see at the youth level, I love to see the coach not in the third base box, yes, but in the dugout. Yeah. And and he's talking with he's like, Okay, we got we got um you know, we got two and oh here. We got a runner on second. You think we're gonna you know, are we are we ready to jump on something here? You think we're gonna get that fastball? We ready to rip here? Yeah. You know, you, you get them thinking situationally. They can't necessarily see the ball, but that's a great time to really get them thinking situationally. Right. And, uh, you know, that the higher they up, up they go, and that starts affecting pitch count and all those things. Right. That's, uh, that's an important part of your formula. The way you said early on, to start reducing the pitches. Okay, here's a situation where I'm looking for this. And it gets a lot easier to hit when you reduce it to yes or no. Right. Just like out in that bullpen. Right. When you reduce it when you reduce it to go no go yes or no I'm looking for X I'm all over it if it's that or something close to it um, otherwise I'm off and the way baseball works and this is very unusual you can't be in tennis and say oh well uh, you know I whipped that serve uh, you know but here here's <laughs> another one you know, <laughs> right. next point you know how I, I can't think of anything else that's like that right so 
one thing for young hitters as they come in, really learn what it learn what that count means for you. Yeah, I, I like the idea of having the coach standing right there and talking to them, you know, talking them through it because it's almost like we assume that kids will know the situation. But if we're not having that conversation, then we're assuming that they're going to have an understanding of what they're going to want to do, and most of the time they don't. Well, if you're in there, then you don't have to say, hey, remember right. this, hey, remember that, because that's right. like lecture mode. What you do right. is you just it, you just work off the situation that's come up there. Right. You know, you work off the situation that's come up, um, and you say, uh, you know, you, you try and get them thinking about, about that, you know, say, hey, even if we're out on second here, are we ready to – or, you know, we're at, we're on first. We got this count. Are we are we ready to score from from first here? You think, of, you know, two outs. You think we can? Uh, you think our guy's going to be able to score from there? Yeah. Anyway, so you just just thinking about the whole, the whole the whole game, building that up because it's such a complicated game. Yes, yeah, very uh, hard. And yet, you know, kind of simple too. I mean, you, right. you hit the ball, you run, you catch the ball, you throw the ball. Right. But these other things are in there. But rather than trying to teach it like some kind of lesson. If, if if you're in there doing that, doing that dugout talk yeah. the whole time, uh, that's that's great. That's what I like to see. Yeah, let's, uh, you know, I don't want to take up too much more of your time, but let's finish up with, let's say, I think this app is, the, the, the GameStand Sports app is very affordable. I think anyone can afford it, but let's say that they can and, and of course you have your ebook where there are a lot of great drills in there to work on some of this pitch recognition stuff but what are a few drills that you can share with us that they can start working on the, the pitch recognition process now well yeah. like we were saying anything that that makes you decide what you're going to do with the ball like where you're saying if you've got a dad or uh, he's just throwing throwing batting practice to the kid, like, like we said, just hit middle away, right. hit high, hit low, you know, um, hit just fastballs, hit just, uh, you know, just, yeah. just, it just, you know, that, that type of thing. Then they're, they're starting to, it makes them look at the ball, right. you know, it makes them, it gives them some purpose with that. Right. And one of the things with young hitters is they just don't know how to wait for the pitch. A lot right. of times they're taking what seems like people, people say, why is their swing so slow? Their swing is so slow because they're starting it too soon. Mm. They're ready to hit that ball as soon as it, as soon as the pitcher lets it go. Right. They, if if they're if you kind of get them to anything where they're reading the, the pitch a little bit, and they're waiting just a little longer. I mean, what even what we used to say with our little leaguers was, wait, watch, and whack, or no, watch, wait, and whack. Watch, you know, were you really looking in on that? Wait. And you're not waiting, you know, having a smoke, waiting for the bus. You're you're reading the pitch, and so that reading the pitch kind of actually slows you down um, just enough. Because when you see the really good hitters, they're not in a big rush. Right. It's not a not a fast twitch type of thing. No, and they, you know, start, they start they start really early. early. They start early, but they don't start at full speed. Right. Right. Exactly. So you're kind of you right. probably you guys that right. go into it real easy, real easy, and now whack. Right. You finish it. Right. So, you know, any of those type of drills are, are, are great. And what really works out well is if, if you've got kids that are doing the app on their phones and, and then they can be working with the, with the, whether it's a parent or a coach or whoever it is, uh, with live things, that's where you put it together. Cause just one or just the other is not as good as both of them sure. together, especially if you've got like an instructor. So if you've got or instructor or a coach, you can you can actually give them some homework. You can right. say, "Hey, we're gonna we're gonna work on hitting curveballs next time. I want you to go on your app that you're doing and look at this pitcher and that that pitcher." Um, you can do something where you go into a um, into even if, even if guys are doing a, a, a hitting off of the tee, sometimes you you can set up two tees. Mm-hmm. And um, what what I like to do, and, and this is in the ebook, where you just put one out there, and that's just like the visualization on that. You're just putting that T out there to see where it would be coming in. Uh, like a lot of, a lot of, of like high school type hitters, when the pitchers start throwing curveballs, especially got right on right or left on left, they're going to start that curveball right at your shoulder. 
That's that old high school curveball. You're going to start it right at your shoulder, and it's going to bend back over the plate, and they're going to have a nice laugh making you foolish. Right. So, you know, that's one where you actually set, just put a ball on a tee right mm-hmm. there, you know, not where you'd hit it, right there in front of your shoulder. Say, that, I'm, I'm doing that because I'm, I'm making a mental image of that curveball that's coming in like, right, it's going to hit me right on the front shoulder. And then I've got my ball sitting right here in the middle of the plate, my tee right here in the ball of the plate. So I am, I am building this, you know, this mental image of having that pitch come in there instead of ducking back from it. I'm hitting it where it's going to be. Yeah, I agree. You know, for the people that are listening in, make sure you check out the Game Sense Sports app. I, I don't think you'll regret it. There's a tremendous amount of value in it. I would also check out the 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 book as well. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a that's an Amazon book. So did you? It's an ebook, so you can see the videos, and um, it's just like five dollars on Amazon. So it's not something that's really made to make a lot of money. It's just uh, there so that that people can find it. And it's not very long. It's only like fifty or sixty pages or something. So. Right, but a but a very valuable fifty to sixty pages that I would highly recommend. Well, I appreciate that. Well, sir, I really appreciate your time. I learned a lot. I'm sure everyone well, listening did as well. Yeah, Jeff, and I l- really look forward to hearing more people on your on your uh, baseball awakening. That's a great name for a podcast. You know, we're. We're waking up to, um, hey, there's a lot of things we just take for granted in this right. sport that we can actually train up. So uh, I like that. Right. Well, that was the idea. You know, there's a lot of things that I think we are, you know, just, just little five-minute things that can make a big difference in player development. I'm Jeff Rottmeyer. Thank you for listening to our conversation on the Baseball Awakening podcast. Stay tuned for our recap show tomorrow.